Awesome. I'm Ryan um, Cummings Menon I'm with the Census Bureau here. Um, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about differentially private estimation via statistical depth. Um, and the usual disclaimer here before I get started, any views expressed here are my own and not those of the Census Bureau. Doesn't appear to be working. Am I doing something wrong? Okay, cool. So, okay, got it, thanks. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna introduce the two notions of depth that I'm uh, using in the paper here. Yeah, I just posted this paper last night on archive. Um, yeah, so the first notion is half space depth. We already heard a little bit about this from Kelly's presentation yesterday. This is a multivariate generalization of rank and maximizing rank gives you the median. So uh, maximizing the half space depth gives you a multivariate generalization of the median known as the two key median or the half space median. Uh, and some advantageous properties is that it's highly robust um, in terms of breakdown value. It has very high breakdown value. It's consistent at the usual parametric rate of of root n and a fine equivariant. So that means that uh, I think Kelly actually mentioned this as well yesterday. So, but basically another word for this is dimensionless. So if you multiply each data point by two, um, the resulting uh, two key median uh, will be two times um, larger in every dimension. Um, and then our related concept is regression depth. Um, and the maximizer is called the deepest regression. So this is a robust regression estimate. Uh, it has the same advantageous properties as the two key median. Um, and yeah, so just to be transparent about, about both of these two notions, both of these two uh, estimators here, they're very computationally difficult to compute um, as Kelly mentioned yesterday. So, uh, there's also the med sweep regression, which is much more computationally efficient. And it's a um, kind of an approximation to the deepest regression. Okay, so let's give an example of half space depth in the Tukey median. Um, so suppose we're given a two dimensional data set um, here, and we want to compute the Tukey median of uh, this star here. Ooh, wow, yeah. So to do that, we're just going to consider every half space with boundary um, with the, where this star is on the boundary. And then we're going to count the number of data points in the half space. So in this case, we, for this particular half space, we have three data points. But we're going to consider all of the possible half spaces and find the one with the least number of data points. So this half space right here has zero data points. So therefore, the half space depth is zero. And as another example here, um, this is uh, computing the two key, the half space depth of this point here, which coincides with the data point. In that case, every half space obviously will contain this data point. So the half space depth um, will be one in this case. And an example is given with the, with the half space minimizing the number of data points here as well. Okay, then we can go further with, um, and uh, plot the set of points with half space depth greater than or equal to one. And that is this set here. And then we can, um, so this is known as a depth contour. We can go ahead and also plot all the depth contours. Um, so there's two more other, in addition to that first one. Um, we have this triangle has half space, every point in the triangle has half space depth greater than or equal to two. And then finally, this one data point right here um, has half space depth equal to three. So that's also the, the two key median. And to briefly outline how to find regression depth, um, let's uh, plot a candidate regression line as an example. Um, and then we're going to find the regression depth of, of this line here. So to do that, we're going to choose a point on the regression line and then rotate the regression line either clockwise or counterclockwise to a vertical line. OK, so if we rotate it around this candidate point on the line to a vertical line, we can do that rotation while passing zero data points. So the line passes over zero data points. Um, 
when it goes to this vertical line here. So therefore, the regression depth is zero in this case. And as another example here, um, okay, and I should say, and you, uh, you would normally, I kind of gave you the answer here with the first candidate point on the regression line, but you'd normally repeat this process for every candidate point on the regression line. Um, and find the minimum number of data points over all possible candidate points, as well as either counterclockwise or clockwise rotations. So in this case, um, we have another candidate regression line here. Um, and we, when we rotate it to a vertical line, it passes over three data points. Um, so its regression depth is, if you repeat this process over all possible candidate points, as well as, uh, um, as well as either counterclockwise or clockwise rotations, this is actually the minimum number of data points that you have to pass for this regression line. So its regression depth is three. And this is also the deepest regression because this is the, out of all possible regression lines, this is the minimum, uh, I mean, this is the maximum regression depth. Okay, so this is was my kind of my starting point for the paper was actually um, something, um, kind of tangential to all of what I've said so far. So my starting point was really um, more about user input put bounds. Um, uh, and yeah, so these are particularly, we talked about this in our discussion a little bit earlier, but um, this is a particularly strong uh, user input requirement in the case of regression, partly because you have uh, multiple dimensions and also if you don't do exploratory data, um, analysis beforehand, it's really difficult to get an idea of what these dimensions, what these bounds should be. Um, you can do this in a differentially private manner to estimate these input bounds. That's what Chen et al. 2016 do. Um, uh, but the error can be significant when um, the bounds are not centered around uh, whatever, uh, the, the bounds are not ideally centered. Um, yeah, when you don't have a, a good estimate of the location of the data to center these bounds around. Um, and so as the diameter of these bounds increases, the global sensitivity increases. So you ideally want very tight bounds around your, about, around your data points, um, and that can be difficult. And that, and then, so yeah, I already said those last two bullet points. So kind of the two areas that I'm mostly focused on um, is how do we reduce the impact of these user input bounds um, on the accuracy of the final estimator? And can we avoid any bounds requirements at all um, and, some, and give some sort of privacy guarantee, not necessarily differential privacy? Uh, because I'm not aware of a pure approximate DP mechanism uh, that can do this without strong parametric assumptions um, like normality. Okay, so the first thing um, the paper does is compute the um, beta smooth sensitivity for these three estimators, the Juki median, deepest regression, and med sweep regression. Um, and this immediately implies peer and approximate differentially private uh, variance of these three estimators. Um, yeah, but this first, these uh, differentially private mechanisms do require bounds in this case. And then the, also, the paper also provides random differentially private um, mechanisms, which is a relaxation of differential privacy provided by uh, Hall et al. Whoa. Um, for the Tukey median and deepest regression estimators. Uh, so I have a little bit of information on this privacy guarantee here. So it, uh, it, the privacy guarantee limits inferences between pairs of neighboring data sets composed of records drawn from the same population distribution. Um, yeah, so the main assumption here is that we are assuming that the records are drawn, um, our IAD draws from a population distribution. That's the main assumption. Um, and, but we're not assuming anything about 
the actual population distribution itself. It's non-parametric. Um, so there's no parametric assumptions on the population distribution. And um, so for an input data set D, the kind of a condition that's related to the sufficient condition we use to prove this, uh, or I use to prove this in the paper is, uh, is that it's epsilon delta um, for all data sets that are drawn from the same population distribution. Um, and yeah. It, yeah, so basically constructing a non-parametric confidence interval around the cumulative distribution, um, around the cumulative distribution, basically that contains the, oh, okay, thanks. That contains the uh, all neighbors, all other draws from the same population distribution with a very high probability. Okay, and these estimators do not require user input bounds. And we also, I also provide simulations to compare the accuracy of the, of the, um, of these two regression estimators with existing approaches. And uh, it looks accurate because I'm short on time. I won't bother expanding on that last thought. All right, and here are my references. That's all I have. Thanks, all.